Hello, good morning. Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some great stories in the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence that I think you want to hear. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about NOAA using computer vision to count fish. We talk about cool companies using satellite imagery to fight wildfires. Neural magic. Tune in and keep listening to find out what that means. And lastly, open space. Better than closed space. To all that and more on this episode of AI Buzz, let's get started. Taking stock of how many species inhabit an ecosystem are is very critical information to have. Whether we want to help endangered species and preserve them and you know help them flourish, or if we want to effectively farm a species, or if we just want to count them, uh, it's very inf- uh, useful information to have an accurate tab on on that population. And so the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association, or NOAA for short, is doing exactly that. They're creating a software called CamTrol that can automatically take video footage and count the number and size of the fish that are in the, the video footage. The need for this is clear because traditionally how they count fish is dragging a net along the bottom of a uh, you know a bo- along the bottom of a body of water and you know that's really not the best way to be doing it of course it's very inefficient and there's actually a lot of environments where you can't do this so um, you know if, if there's if, there, if it's very rocky or if, it, if the body of water is too deep this cannot be done so this new software called CamTrol can actually do a pretty good job of it. And here's some uh, from the news station KTUU. Uh, they interview uh, one of the scientists from NOAA, and it's in collaboration with University of Washington, showing it in action. So let's check that out. ...of the fish. Yet one unavoidable question, just how much will automation take over the industry? Are we going to eventually just take people completely out of this whole survey game? Are we going to just have a bunch of robots, you know, patrolling the waters up in Alaska? And um... Yeah, really cool, really cool stuff. Um, so CamTrol, the scientist states that it can reduce a full summer's worth of work into a day on, uh, you know, just a normal computer. So... The intern can be doing something else besides counting fish for an entire summer. They hope to reach an accuracy of 80% eventually. And yeah, hope to see CamTrol get used and uh, these scientists can be putting putting their time and effort into some some of the other big problems that they're they're working on. Next up, Chooch. Fighting wildfires is really freaky. Um we hear about them all the time in California, and it's it's really scary because you know people live near these fires, and a lot of times they'll have to evacuate. Uh, in some cases, people you know people can actually die with these fi- these wildfires, and it's, it's scary. And you know, trying to fight these once they get to a certain size is like almost impossible. I think it's kind of have to wait them out until fire season is over and that's actually a thing out there is they have a fire season um you know there's just, it can just get so dry and there's so much forest out in uh california so washington post article 33 million acres of forest so keeping track and you know kind of watching this huge swath of forest and seeing if there's wildfires present is it'd be very valuable to uh, emergency responders so this company called chooch ai is looking at satellite imagery to identify these wildfires and essentially what they're doing is they can get relatively low resolution satellite images every 10 minutes and they're training a computer vision model to be able to identify these fires one of the uh, compromises that they had to make was they could either get the lower resolution images every 10 minutes or they could get really high resolution images every day. 
And they chose for the, the 10 minute intervals because they really want to reduce the amount of time it takes from a fire starting to identification and response. So Chooch, Chooch AI, as stated in this Washington Post article, is doing some awesome work on trying to build an AI tool and, uh, you know, essentially cut the time that it takes emergency responders to get there, get it contained, and I think we'll see much better outcomes from a lot of this type of stuff. So great job, Chooch. Next up, Neural Magic. Sounds like some sort of mushroom that you take at uh, Lollapalooza or uh, Burning Man, but it's not. It's a company that has recently, according to this TechCrunch article, gotten some seed funding. Um, and what they're trying to do is instead of creating some of this wild, wild special specialized hardware, instead of trying to make a neural processing unit that you know specializes in certain uh, matrix multiplications. Uh, instead of trying to make a, a GPU at like a five nanometer size, or you know, or trying to build a quantum computer, instead of going that route with the hardware, because there's a lot of people working on that, and um, doesn't seem like it's getting too far. You know, like people are working on all these technologies, but it's just not ready to really be rolled out. So. They're not going the hardware route. They're working with what everyone already has. They're working with everyone's CPUs. So on everyone's computer, of course, we have CPU. And in order to do inference, which is the actual prediction part of machine learning. So the first part is training the model, which you do. There's really no way around that is uh, you do need a pretty powerful computer to do. You'll have to pay Amazon or... Um, one of those big tech companies, a lot of money to train uh, a model on tons of data to learn features and parameters and stuff in your data. And then the output of this is really only, it's it's a pretty small little file. And what, what's in that file would be the parameters and the kind of the layout of your, your model. I'm speaking specifically about, you know, training a neural network. You'd get a config file that kind of has the layout and structure of your network. And then you just have a ton of learned parameters that are the result of all that training. So pretty small files compared to what data goes in. But then to actually predict, you basically need that those two little files and then you need something to predict on. So in the case of cat versus dog, trying to tell them apart, uh, you, you can train a model on millions of cat and dog photos using a supercomputer. And the output of that would be a relatively small file. And that would contain probably millions of different weights of the different uh, nodes in your network. And then when you want to predict, you just feed in a single photo of a cat and feed it into this model and let it compute it. And this, Neural Magic says, can really be optimized to be done on everyone's CPU. Instead of doing, um, instead of using one of these specialized units, they're approaching it from a software perspective. So they say that they'll be able to reach GPU speeds with their new software. And an advantage that he says uh, their approach has is they have access to a computer's full memory. So graphics cards, typically they're limited to uh, like eight or 12 gigabytes of onboard dedicated memory. Uh, it's pretty common for you know computers to have 16 or 32 gigabytes. So you have access to a lot more memory and Neuromagic, they're, they're getting some, some nice funding. They, it's a, it's a spin out of MIT. They seem to really be on the right track approaching this from a software perspective. And, um, Software can advance a lot faster than the hardware. So great work from them. Looking forward to seeing how um, how they can try to outrun hardware development with this really nice software that they, they have. Neural magic. It's not a uh, magic mushroom. It's, uh, it's a machine learning company, and they're doing awesome. Next up, open space. So... 
this is one of the really cool AI companies that I've, I've read about um, applying artificial intelligence in the construction arena and to try to track different projects. This is, this is a really cool company. So essentially what the company is, is you can you know, get this software and then you can run it on um, you can run it on a camera that people can strap to their their helmets essentially. And um, as as people w- walk around a construction site over days and stuff, it will kind of create a composite view of the progress of the construction site. Let me show you this really cool video that they they have here. Yeah, so pretty cool stuff, right? And you can essentially get these uh, these types of updates, you know, over over time. So someone could be doing this each day, and then you can kind of get a progress update on on how it's all coming along. So this is a really great application of AI, and um, Open Space is getting some nice uh, some nice funding as well. Excited to see where they where they take that new money and hope we see this starting to roll out very soon. Would love to see this get applied to some of the years-long construction projects near where I live. All right. Well, that's it for today on this episode of AI Buzz. What I talked about today was Noah using computer vision to count fish. Chooch fighting wildfires with satellite imagery. Nice work. And neural magic doing some cool things with software, trying to uh, work with what they have in terms of CPUs, open space, creating visualizations of construction sites, and pretty awesome stuff. You get to walk around with a cool camera on your head, and you get to generate maps. Sounds like a fun day to me. All right, thanks so much for tuning in this episode of AI Buzz. I'm your host, Nick. I'll be back very, very soon with more episodes and more stories in the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.